So you want to get into Carnegie Mellon University? Well, I want to help you do it. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions expert. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process. Tip number one, below this video, there's a link to my classic article, How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically. I want you to read that article from start to finish, because if you do, you're going to enter the first day of your 12th grade year in high school well positioned to get in to Carnegie Mellon as a high school senior. You see, the college application process really does not begin in 12th grade. It begins in the beginning of high school, really the summer before ninth grade. You are on the clock as it relates to the colleges who will be ultimately reviewing your file. So it's extremely important that you plan accordingly and that article, How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically, is going to give you, like I said, all you need to know in order to make the most of your entire high school career so you can get into any highly selective college as a high school senior. Now, of course, Carnegie Mellon is not officially an Ivy League institution. However, its acceptance rate is pretty darn low, particularly for its most in-demand majors. And as a result, you're going to want to navigate the application process at Carnegie Mellon as if it were, in fact, an Ivy League school. Tip number two, when you apply to Carnegie Mellon is just as important as the quality of your application. So if you really are in it to win it at Carnegie Mellon and you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the very best shot of getting in, I strongly recommend that you apply to Carnegie Mellon either Early Decision 1 or Early Decision 2. They offer both as options at Carnegie Mellon. Some schools of this ilk do not offer early decision two, but Carnegie Mellon is an exception in that sense because they give you two shots at early decision. The early decision one deadline is November 1st. You hear by the middle of December. The early decision two deadline in the calendar year 2024, at least, is January 3rd, and you hear middle of uh, February. That's a quite nice Valentine's Day gift for you if you want to get in early decision two. Uh, no matter which one you choose, your chances statistically of getting in to Carnegie Mellon will be higher as an early decision applicant than your chances will be if you apply regular decision at the same time as all the students who are applying who just got deferred or rejected from MIT or Caltech or Wash U or Johns Hopkins, what you name it, whatever the case may be, they're all going to be applying to Carnegie Mellon regular. So you want to avoid the... Uh, you know, the pileup that is regular decision, if at all possible. The downside, of course, of early decision is that you must attend if you get in. And so that's a big commitment. You have to sign a contract. Your parent has to sign a contract. Your high school counselor has to sign a contract, all indicating that you will, in fact, go if you are admitted. So be sure that Carnegie Mellon is, in fact, your first choice school if you're going to go down the road of actually applying early decision and uh, make sure that your finances are in order and that you are happy with the way in which Carnegie Mellon conducts its financial aid review process and that they meet the type of need that you would want them to meet uh, in order to ensure that confidently you can apply early decision and uh, come the decision of yes, uh, you will be happy to pay Carnegie Mellon over the next four years, uh, whatever you think they will you know, guesstimate or estimate they will come back with in terms of their financial aid package based off of your due diligence that you have engaged in before you, in fact, commit to applying early decision. If you had to choose between early decision one or early decision two, I would strongly recommend early decision one because you want to know by winter break, right? You want to know by New Year's Day that you've gotten in and you might as well enjoy the second half of your 12th grade year in high school and not have to delay it maybe one or two extra whole months by doing early decision two. So if you can get your ducks in a row early, early, uh, I would definitely apply by November 1st, which is the early decision one deadline at Carnegie Mellon. Again, statistically speaking, uh, your chances of getting into Carnegie Mellon will be increased if you are willing to commit to Carnegie Mellon before Carnegie Mellon is willing to commit to you. Tip number three. Carnegie Mellon is a selective school, so as a selective school, you want to be able to convey as much information as humanly possible about the depth and breadth of what you've accomplished and how impressive you are as a person 
throughout your high school career. And to do that with Carnegie Mellon, you don't unfortunately have the opportunity to upload a full-fledged extracurricular resume to the Carnegie Mellon supplement on the common application. But what you do have the opportunity to do is copy and paste a 650 word resume into the additional information section of the Common Apps writing page where you can provide overflow content uh, that did not make the cut on the activities page of the common application. Most Carnegie Mellon students have very impressive uh, extracurricular backgrounds and it, their backgrounds are not going to most likely fit into the top 10 activities list on the activities page of the common application. So use that 650 word additional information section of the common apps writing page. It's below the common app essay and below sort of the COVID or exceptional circumstances essay for you to be able to elaborate on uh, what it is you've achieved or accomplished in the extracurricular realm throughout your high school career. You can go far as far back as the summer after eighth grade or the summer before ninth grade. Anything that's happened that you feel like you just could not fit or requires additional explanation should in fact be included in that additional information section. Of course, you're limited there too. You only have 650 words. If you want some guidance on how to put together an extraordinary extracurricular resume for that 650 word uh, field within the writing page of the common portion of the common application, or if you just want to put together an extraordinary unabridged extracurricular resume about yourself that maybe you'll be able to upload to other colleges you're applying to that accept full-fledged extracurricular resumes, unabridged extracurricular resumes, I strongly recommend you take in both of those circumstances my How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume short course. It's linked below this video. You can purchase it over at Gum Road. Again, the link to it is below this video. That course is less than an hour in length. It only costs a couple of dollars to rent or to buy, and that course is going to teach you everything you need to know in, how, in terms of how to put together formatting-wise and content-wise an extracurricular resume that's really going to help positively differentiate you, your unique experiences over your high school career, and your unique accomplishments and achievements over your high school career in such a way as to be a value-added net positive for your overall application to Carnegie Mellon and any other school where you want to stand a head and shoulders above the competition. Now at Carnegie Mellon on their supplement, you will of course see the question asking you about when you want to apply. We already talked about that. I do want to just note that in a test optional environment, Carnegie Mellon does still require you to send your official score reports from the SAT or ACT if you ultimately opt to share your scores. So it's not going to be good enough for you to say, I want my scores to be considered and then for you to just self-report them on the testing page of the common application. Don't get caught in that quicksand. You need to actually pay the testing agencies, either the SAT or the ACT, the money you need to actually have your official score report sent. Because just by self-reporting it on the common app, that will not be enough at a school like Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon requires official score reports in order to consider your application complete once you actually opt to apply with your test score. So if you want to submit that 1570 on the SAT or that 35 on the ACT, make sure you go to either collegeboard.org or actstudent. I think it's org or com or whatever, whatever, actstudent.org, I think, in order to have your official score report sent so that they're in well before the deadline so that your application can be given the very strongest and best read possible. Also on the supplement to the common application for Carnegie Mellon, they ask you, uh, to share additional context related to your testing if you want to provide it. This is true whether or not you submit your test scores for SAT or ACT or you don't. Uh, if you want to provide something here, you can. You only have 150 words to do so. Uh, I would not really try to make it sound like the dog ate my homework type of situation. Obviously, if you're a straight A student and you're not submitting test scores, you might want to indicate why you're not submitting test scores, uh, but you don't have to. I mean, so it's completely optional. Similarly, if you felt like you could have gotten a 1600 on the SAT or 36 on the ACT and you didn't, maybe you got sick, you fell ill halfway through the test and you're just submitting a 1500, oh, well, what was you? Only a 1500. You might still want to explain the circumstances surrounding why you did not score higher. But really, ultimately, I don't recommend that you use that space unless you have a very compelling short, short story to share uh, that would provide the Carnegie Mellon Missions team additional information context-wise about uh, your testing background. Beyond that, they also ask you on the Carnegie Mellon Supplement to the Common Application to indicate whether or not you are one of the following, a gender, female slash woman, gender fluid, gender nonconforming, gender queer, intergender, intersex, male slash man, 
or non-binary. All my international students look at me when I share this with them and they are shocked that the application would ask this, but welcome to the United States and welcome to higher education in the United States. They want to know about these things. And so, of course, if you have any doubts about your gender, now would be the time to have them. But otherwise, I would probably just leave that question blank if you don't feel sh comfortable sharing or share your actual sex as you were born into the world. Beyond that, you also get the question of do you identify as transgendered? And again, I always tell students that honesty is the best policy. As it relates to academics, there, of course, is the question of what college within Carnegie Mellon you want to go to. They're all great, but there's, of course, the College of Engineering, the College of Fine Arts, the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Information Systems, Mellon College of Science, School of Computer Science, and the Tepper School of Business. Do not lie here. Talk about authenticity. It's very important, to be honest. If you are applying to Carnegie Mellon, you're most likely quite interested in a pre-professional area of focus or the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Do not play games with thinking, well, will I have a better shot of getting to Carnegie Mellon if I put this school or that school? Because it's relatively hard to make the switch at Carnegie Mellon. It's not such an easy school to double major in even. So I would strongly recommend that you be uh, thoughtful in your research and then reflection processes before you actually select which college at Carnegie Mellon you want to apply to. Be honest. Again, honesty is the best policy because you want to be getting into the college within Carnegie Mellon that really would allow you to hit the ground running upon acceptance, should you be accepted to Carnegie Mellon, which of course you have the very best shot of getting accepted now that you're watching this very informative video. On the next page of the supplement, they ask you about contacts at Carnegie Mellon. Have you previously applied to Carnegie Mellon? You could say, of course, honestly, yes or no. Um, and also, if you wish to be contacted by cell phone, Again, I encourage you to say yes, that you are willing to be contacted by cell phone just in case the admissions committee has a question for you, but also so that you can get any sort of promotional texts that Carnegie Mellon may or may not want to send you. They also ask you, did your family go to Carnegie Mellon? Honestly answer, do not lie. Uh, have any relatives attended? Have any relatives ever worked at Carnegie Mellon? Those are things that are important for Carnegie Mellon. They do like to know if there are familial relations that you have with the university already. But the real tip that I want to, and building to here, is for the writing questions on the writing supplement for Carnegie Mellon supplement on the common application. There are three in the 2023-2024 admission cycle. And I'm going to just go bang, bang, bang with all three right now. Prompt number one. Most students choose their intended major or area of study based on a passion or inspiration that's developed over time. What passion or inspiration led you to choose this area of study? So again, we just talked a few moments ago about how it's very important to be honest and authentic on the question portion of the, the Common App uh, Supplement for Carnegie Mellon that asks you basically, where do you want to major at Carnegie Mellon? What school and what is your major? This is why. you you got to now write a 300-word response uh, explaining what passion or inspiration led you to choose the area of study you selected earlier on the supplement. So again, that's why you don't want to make things up just to get in. You've got to be authentic. Now, in terms of my additional tips for how you would respond to this 300-word short essay, I strongly recommend that you anchor the essay around one of two things. Either why you are so in love with this subject area. Maybe you're in love with computer science, or you're in love with history, or you're in love with, uh, you know, some field in engineering. You know, and just basically write a love letter to sort of why it fascinates you so much. And, you know, you can build it, sort of anchor it around that. In such a scenario, you would still want to be able to add at least a few sentences specific to Carnegie Mellon by the end, explaining how you feel like you're going to continue to be able to run forward with this passion uh, in highly specific ways at Carnegie Mellon. But the other option you potentially have is, let's say you want to be an international business person. And or you have a very specific goal in mind in terms of what type of business you want to build, ultimately, maybe you ground your passion or anchor this particular essay around the idea that you've long dreamed of developing this particular business. 
and you can explain, you know, what that business would look like and why you're interested in it. Maybe it's because it makes a lot of money, maybe because it makes a lot of money, but it also can do good for the world in some social way or the other or environmentally or whatever, you, what have you. Uh, but you're going to ground or maybe frame the essay in that sense, sort of looking forward. So you have the option. You can either write this essay backward looking primarily, but still with a few sentences referencing how you're going to continue to carry this flag and passion forward at Carnegie Mellon, or you can write this essay very forward looking, sort of painting a picture of, of why you're so passionate about pursuing this field because of some long term goal you have in the field professionally, career wise, you know, financially, you have a stake in this. And then you work backwards to also include maybe a few sentences in that scenario where you can explain why Carnegie Mellon is a, an essential stop on the journey to becoming what you're painting yourself as becoming in the context of a forward-looking particular essay, if you choose to look at it that way. You can't probably do both very successfully because you only have three-inch words, so I would either keep it mainly backward-looking with a little mention of Carnegie Mellon specifics at the end, or forward-looking with also some mention of Carnegie Mellon specifics by the end. In terms of how you structure it overall, a one to two sentence intro with a thesis statement, then a one to two paragraph body where you're proving the thesis, and then a one or two sentence conclusion where you're sharing some new bit of information and going a step beyond the thesis. So do not just restate your thesis or elements of your body in your conclusion. That is ridiculous. That is a waste of words. And you want to make sure that all 300 words on your final draft are there for a reason, are really you know earning their, their pay, if you will. Um, otherwise, you should cut them in the editing process, and that's why ultimately a lot of people do choose to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, is because the editing process is unfortunately something that K-12 through education is really not emphasizing these days, but for a school like Carnegie Mellon, you do need to edit it and edit it well so that you can be sure that your final draft is putting you in the very best light and is, ar is articulate and as eloquent as possible. Now, prompt number two, many students pursue college for a specific degree, career opportunity, or personal goal, whichever it may be. Learning will be critical to achieve your ultimate goal. As you think ahead to the process of learning during your college years, how will you define a successful college experience? I personally think this is a really almost like a trick question prompt. If you have a bad attention span or you don't focus well enough, you may write this essay in such a way where you are basically talking about your long-term career or personal goals. That's not what you really could or should be doing here. You instead should be really diving deep on what will a successful four-year experience look like on the ground in the weeds at Carnegie Mellon. This is your sort of why Carnegie Mellon academic essay. This is where you should be talking about what you want to build your curriculum to look like over the next four years. What, how will you learn? What will you do to augment your learning outside the classroom? What will that process of learning look like? So this is where you can get into the weeds of particular courses you want to take, professors you want to work with, um, institutes you want to be a part of or do research in. You really, And they all should be, of course, Carnegie Mellon specific. You shouldn't just say, I'm really interested in studying computer science again. You should be talking about a particular Carnegie Mellon computer science professor or a particular course or two that's really going to add value added considering your unique goals. You can, of course, allude to your unique goals, um, as I mentioned, you could do in the first prompt as well. And especially if you were a more backward looking essay on the first prompt, you could talk a little bit more about your, your long term goals in this one uh, than if you do a forward looking essay for the first one. But in, in both cases, the majority of the content of this particular response should be focused on describing and painting a picture of you as a student on Carnegie Mellon's campus engaging in the life of the mind over the next four years. What will that look like for you? How will you engage with your classmates, your professors? What opportunities specific to Carnegie Mellon will you take advantage of that will give the admissions officers reading your application confidence that you really have done your due diligence on Carnegie Mellon and that you have thought long and hard and done research long and hard into what it actually looks like to be a business student at Carnegie Mellon or a fine arts student at Carnegie Mellon, and that you can describe how that four-year story arc will really look in the context of this 300-word response. Because the key element of this prompt is as you think ahead to the process of learning, 
during your college years, how will you define a successful college experience? So your thesis statement in your intro sentence or two needs to allude to the definition of success for the next four years at Carnegie Mellon. And it should be pretty tightly wound up with what you're looking for from your academic and learning experience at Carnegie Mellon. You can't necessarily tie it to, I'm going to be working at this investment bank, or I'm going to be doing this entrepreneurially, or I'm going to be a computer science uh, person in Silicon Valley in a few years. No, you can't really frame it too much on that because that's that's assuming you're going to get there, but you may not. What will success be for the four years when you graduate? You know, maybe with or without a job or a career in mind at that point. But what will the process of learning look like for you? How will you engage in the life of the university at Carnegie Mellon? That's what you need to prove in the body of this response. And ultimately, in the overall response, you need to have a very tightly wound and very articulate case made for the fact that you know how you're going to take advantage of Carnegie Mellon and harness its amazing resources over four years, but that you're also able to paint a picture of yourself being a value added to Carnegie Mellon. You're not just going to be some shrinking violet. You're actually going to be out and engaged in the life of Carnegie Mellon in a way that they're going to get really excited for, that you're not just going to be sucking the blood out of them like a leech, that you're actually going to be giving back to Carnegie Mellon as you learn more. So you're going to be as collaborative as you're going to be... Um, you know, taking advantage, if you will, of the resources of, of Carnegie Mellon. So these are these are themes that you need to be able to convey in this particular response. And again, you only have 300 words, but I think you can do it now that you've heard the advice that I've given you. And of course, if you're not a great writer, go to collegemeister.com and learn how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one for uh, college application coaching support. Finally, the final prompt for the 2023-2024 admission cycle at Carnegie Mellon is as follows. Consider your application as a whole. What do you personally want to emphasize about your application for the admissions committee's consideration? Highlight something that's important to you or something you haven't had a chance to share. Tell us. Don't show us. No websites, please. You have 300 words. Now, again, somewhat of a red herring at the end. Tell us. Don't show us. Of course, yeah, don't show, you can't upload a picture, you can't, you, you shouldn't include a link. Um, but you should still sort of frame this around showing detail. So obviously using words, you do want to paint a picture of whatever you feel like is important enough to share with Carnegie Mellon in this 300, 300 word response. I would agree with Carnegie Mellon that you should opt for sharing something you have not yet shared. And so if you have more to say about why you think you're a great fit for Carnegie Mellon and Carnegie Mellon's a great fit for you, and you have not yet conveyed the depth and breadth of that argument previously because you've been so hyper-focused on your major or so hyper-focused on your long-term goals or what you'll be doing academically at Carnegie Mellon that you've, you've left out why you really want to be in Pittsburgh or why you really want to take advantage of these three or four clubs or whatever, this would be the space to share sort of that why Carnegie Mellon specific argument that you've yet to make. However, if there's additional information about your identity, your background, your goals that are also really important uh, for you to share, or just your personality, um, this would be the place where you could write a short little essay about yourself to share something new. However you choose to approach it in terms of content, I would structure it relatively traditionally in the sense a one to two sentence intro with a thesis, a body paragraph or two that proves the thesis, that shows supporting detail that you actually know how to make a case in the thesis and then prove it in the body. And then the conclusion should, again, say something new and not just prosaic where you're repeating the, the thesis or, or intro or parts of the body, again, in just new words. You should be say, saying some new ideas or a new idea in the conclusion that just leaves them wanting that much more of you as a person and as a student and as an overall applicant because this basically is your closing argument for, for Carnegie Mellon to share some new facet of yourself, new information about yourself that will sort of uh, close the circle, if you will, and make sure that they really have a full, comprehensive, holistic sense of who you are, not just as a student, as I said, but also as a person. How, again, I would structure it, as I mentioned, intro, body, thesis, in the intro, conclusion that goes a step beyond the thesis, you're going to be in a really good place if you structure your essays in that traditional manner to keep your thoughts organized and in line. 
Otherwise, I wish you very good luck at getting into Carnegie Mellon. I think now you have better luck because you've sat through the entire video. You were smart to do this. This was not luck. This was a choice you made. So congratulations. If you want to learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one, -on -one, again, my name is Craig Meister. You can and you should go to my website, collegemeister.com. If you're not in the mood to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that's okay. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or you found it useful. Share it with your family and friends and also subscribe to my channel. Carnegie Mellon, again, is an amazing school, and a lot of students will be applying, but again, you have now given yourself the very best shot of getting in because you've gotten some advice from an expert. Until next time, my name is Craig Meister. Stay safe, stay well, have a great day.